Please join me in a pledge of allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen uh, meeting for August 28, 2017. We will start off with public comment. Is there anybody here wishing to make any public comments? Gary Pohl, 4 Lion Street. On uh, Friday, we got a call from uh, somebody who wanted to know that our 36-year-old grandson was in jail in Florida and needed bail money. And we, after much searching, we found him alive and well and hiding in Maine. So I just want to advise everybody here, we were also advised by the uh, police department to contact the Attorney General and file a report, which I did. Uh, I just want to advise everybody around here that uh, scams are still in the air and be careful. Thank you. Thank you. Glad you Anybody else? Money. Anybody else with you? Just quickly, uh, Patricia Murphy for Haverhill Avenue and Hampton. Uh, I have two points to make this regarding the uh, continuing volume problem from Bernie's. I know this is tabled until, I believe, after Seafood Fest. I'm not sure whether it's going to be heard, uh, the selectmen's meeting immediately following that. Uh, however, I think the board should be aware the volume continues to be unreasonable, particularly after 11 p.m. When the and I've called on three separate occasions. I know a number of my neighbors have also called uh, on a number of occasions. And the officers come. They're very polite. Um, they haven't had any issues with how the police department interacts with me. And I understand my neighbors don't either. However, uh, to the extent you get a report uh, from the dispatch that says the volume was not unreasonable, understand that number one they don't show up with a decibel meter so there's no way to test for whether it's over 50 decibels uh, number two they will not accept um, any of our um, handheld meters whether it's a separate meter or a cell phone app um, they have received a memo from the chief informing them that bernie's has a license till for live entertainment till 11 p.m monday through uh, Thursday, which is correct, and Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they have a license until midnight, which is, of course, correct. Absent in that memo, uh, which the chief did, in fact, read to me, was the fact that the volume is supposed to drop after 11 p.m. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to do with that. I've asked when they come to come with a meter, uh, and that, that has not happened. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to address was I'm requesting some transparency in the process of looking at the ordinance and any changes in the ordinance. I know there was some discussion. I watched the, um, this hearing on the August 7th meeting. Um, in the last six minutes, uh, there was some discussion about what was going to happen. Uh, and I'm not sure whether there is going to be a committee relative to this. I've written to the board um, and indicated my willingness to serve on any such committee. I know there, are, there are, is another neighbor from White Island willing to serve and a neighbor from Boar's Head willing to serve. Um, I'd like some notice, some opportunity to be heard, some input into the process uh, before anything happens. Um, the meetings, the calendar for what's being heard the following Monday doesn't come out until the Friday before the meeting, which I understand is standard process. But if we as a community could be afforded some input and some notice as to what's happening, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, and I, I know my neighbors would appreciate that as well. So thank you very much for your time tonight, and I look forward to hearing from you uh, in response to the emails that I've sent to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to uh, make any comments this evening? Seeing none, we'll move to announcements and community calendar. Negative. Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. 
Yeah, I wanted to um, congratulate uh, how well the pig roast went for all the people that worked hard there. Um, it was either a record or a near record, and it was a nice day. Everyone seemed to have a good time. And I also would like to mention um, the salute they had to Beverly Hollingsworth. It was very well attended. Um, she had a lot of uh, people there. And she, you know, had a lot of nice things said about her. She worked very hard for many years, so it was nice to see her appreciated. I did, did see and talk to Jean Shaheen there for uh, two or three minutes, and she seemed to be right on with what's happening here in Hampton. She was very well versed. Uh, she mentioned several things, including about sending uh, a delegation from the Air Force <coughs> to one of the hearings or proceedings and uh, she's going to pay attention to what's happening here like, like she always does and I thanked her for all the good work that she does on behalf of Hampton. Mr. Bridal, a couple of things. The, uh, uh, we had a meeting the other night with the crew from or the, the Cobb as he's called, the, he's the chief of the boat of the USS Hampton and uh, they are still interested in doing some projects uh, coming to some of our events in town, so uh, we've kind of regenerated that, and I think it's uh, it's going to work out very well. Second of all, I want to just say our thoughts and prayers go out to the people in Texas. Very good. Yeah, I'd like to ditto on the, on the Texas that our thoughts and prayers go out to those people that are they're really facing a, a real mess down there. And also, I'd say that tomorrow, I see the superintendent here and the deputy chief of police here. School starts tomorrow, and people really should be aware of that when they're driving. If you need to get to work, leave early so you're not rushing on the road. Pay attention to what you're doing. It's very important when school starts that people drive safely. Thank you. With that, we'll go to the consent calendar. Hampton Cemetery Deed, Sharon Buck and Kristen Russell. Seafood Festival Sidewalk Vendor Permits, Loops of 55, 107 Ocean Boulevard, Graphic Creation Trees, 119 Ocean Boulevard, Airbrush Underground, 205 Ocean Boulevard, Beach Bums, 215 Ocean Boulevard. How do you say that? Las Pega. Las Pega. Pizza, 215 Ocean Boulevard, and JP's, JB's Seafood, 187 Ocean Boulevard. So moved. Second. All in favor? Approved. Uh, we'll change up the appointments just a little bit. The Superintendent Murphy and uh, Deputy Chief want to come up. We'll deal with that one first. The parking restriction, I figure you both are pretty busy. So we'll get you in and out. Thank you so much for doing that. Just a quick memo to outline what we're asking. Thank you. Oh, good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, young lady. Good to see you. Well, thank you for uh, having us here tonight. Um, as you know, we, we wanted the, the opportunity to come and talk to you tonight about some of the changes at Hampton Academy and what that's um, the impact that has on the morning drop-offs and afternoon pickups. Um, the superintendent has put together a nice plan with our staff in terms of how to uh, com come around those uh, changes uh, to have a safe plan to get students to and from school. And, and in discussion, there was some, um, an impact on some of the parking regulations there, so we thought it would be uh, the right thing to do is to come to you to get some of uh, your permission uh, to implement this plan, which I think really does take into effect the safety of the children uh, getting them to and from school. We hope that this will alleviate some of the congestion on Academy Ave. I appreciated uh, town manager's comments about avoiding that area in the morning and in the afternoon because it really is congested. Two things are going to happen. We will no longer bring the buses onto the property. We will drop the kids off on Academy Ave um, with buses headed towards High Street. They'll be exited off their buses right on the Hampton Academy side, so that will be keep them safe. Um, we are doing that to alleviate all the congestion that is currently in the bus loop because of the construction. It really, the construction narrowed down some of the area of which those big, large 90 passenger buses have to turn in. 
What we did was, though, we've, we, with your permission tonight, well, we're going to move the parent uh, drop-off from Academy F and bring them onto the site, into the loop in front of the school, uh, on the side of the school where the um, buses uh, use that loop uh, prior to uh, uh, this year. So um, parents will come off of Academy Ave, no longer be able to drop off their youngsters on Academy Ave, which they usually did in front of people's houses and driveways at 7.20 in the morning till about 20 minutes of 8, um, and have the youngsters walk across the street. And it's been really um, problematic. And so with this construction, we'd ask permission to have no parking on the house side of Academy Ave um, because all the bus, all the parents will be using the loop in, internally in the parking lot. We will also have staff there, just so you know, um, Officer uh, Matt Robinson is our SRO, always on site, always at that, always at Hampton Academy every morning, uh, assisting uh, Principal O'Connor and um, his assistant, uh, in addition to other teachers that are out there on duty. So we know that there'll be plenty of staff out there to help parents uh, be redirected. And with those parking restrictions, we, we, uh, we're looking for Monday through Friday, 7 to 3, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. during those school hours. Uh, so we understand the impact it has on the residents there, too. So <clears throat> we felt it was easiest for our enforcement standard just to do it from 7 to 3, kind of similar to what you see over at Winnicott. Um, by the high school. Um, this is like throwback Thursday, like when Mr. Bean and I used to go to the middle <laughs> school. Right? So the buses used their own park out there. So I'll make a motion that we go along with their, their uh, plan they have and how it be and, and do it until they need to come back and change it. Second. I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. Can I say, that? when I went to school there in 1963, that's the way it was, too. I forgot you. The yeah. buses when Bean buses and uh, Russell went in there? Front. Yeah, well, they were horse drawn. But that's okay, okay, but they were buses. It's a good one, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> All right. All in favor? <laughs> very good. And, Thank you know, you it would much. be wise for people that don't aren't dropping children off or don't have anybody in the academy, not even to drive down that road, avoid right. oh, yeah. that, that street right. at all costs during the morning. We wanted it to be as open as possible should the fire uh, station need access. Now, they'll use, uh, they use Winnicott Road, but, you, you know, you never know what kind of situation will demand that they have to go up Academy Ave and head towards High Street. So this will alleviate that problem because we won't have uh, vehicles on both sides of the street. So we think it's a win-win for everybody right now. And when the new project comes through, we have a different kind of a um, traffic pattern. We'll bring that back to you, but it will not um, entail any public way. So we think we'll be okay, but we'll be back anyway to, to okay. update you on the project. Excellent. All right, thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks Very for good. everything. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks. Good luck tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for your good words about um, being careful around Center and Marston and, and the Academy. All around, right. Thank you. Okay, appointments. Christy Pulliam, Finance Director. Monthly update. Good evening. Good evening. I just got these reports, I think, at least a week ago, maybe two weeks ago now. Uh, it's for the month of July. The target was 58.3%, seventh month of 2017. The revenue summary, when you review the attached revenue report, you can see the differences in revenue from 16 to 17. In 17, revenue is slightly above the target at 58.87% and above the 16 actuals for July. The month's total income was $1,001,713. Of that total, mo motor vehicles came in at $271,905, which is under the month's target by $27,037. The other major contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at 11,615, building permits at 108,258, that's really jumped, highway subsidy at $267,543, departmental income at 44,957, rice sewer agreement at 31,670, parking lots at 160,000 
and thirty-seven dollars, and the real estate trust at one hundred thousand four hundred and fifty. On the expense side of things, you'll find that we are under budget by five hundred sixteen thousand four hundred forty-eight dollars, or two point oh nine percent. In July of 16, year-to-date expenses were 273,375 or 1.13 under the target of 58.3%. I'll just briefly go through the department's um, the sections at a whole as a whole that are over target at this point. Under election registration and vital statistics, there are a few lines over the target, but the section as a whole is still under budget. The same is true in finance with a few lines over target, but section as a whole is under. Audit is at 72.71, uh, which is the result of the one payment being, installment payment being made there. Legal expenses is at 156.87%, and the legal department as a whole is now over target at 83.93%. Outside counsel fees and litigation expenses continue to be the two driving factors here. Uh, these overages are now driving the general government section to be over target as a whole. It's at 59.1%. Personnel administration, planning board, and zoning board all have lines that are over target, but their sections are still running under budget. Under municipal insurance, you'll see that the liability and general insurance, along with the workers' comp, are both almost completely spent. That's a result of we have annual payments in those. Uh, for those two line items and they were made in July so there shouldn't be any more bills for that parking administration is over target at 64.45 percent but the season is coming to an end so there's no concerns there the police department is under target at 53.8 percent and the fire department also is under target at 51 percent emergency management re remains the same they've been running that the whole year 221 percent but it's a small number again Hydrants is 73.36 with the second semi-annual payment being made in July. In the Public Works Department, you will see line items that are over target, but only uh, pointing out, I'll just point out the sections that are over the budget there. Cleaning and maintenance is at 66.7%. The line item hired equipment summer is driving factor here. Snow and ice removal remains at 99.6%. So I guess we'll have no more snow for the year. That'll make everyone happy, right? Highways and streets as a whole is now under target at 57.6% when you include open purchase orders. They had been running um, above and now they're below. Waste water treatment administration is at 65.5% when you include the annual purchase order for chemicals. And when it's not included, they're at 60%. And the sewer treatment is at 60.7%. The Public Works Department is, as a whole is under budget at 55.9. The library appears to be over target, but that's related to their uh, quarterly appropriation being paid in July. Patriotic Purposes is at 61.53%. Town Beautification is at 73.35%. Uh, the other special revenue funds, Fund 24, the Recreation Fund, has a balance of $173,312 with 10,990 being collected for uh, beach sticker donations and 14,700 being awarded in uh, scholarships for people to attend all different camps and programs that they offer. Fund 25, the cable fund has a balance of $307,459. Fund 26, private detail has a balance of 137,118. Fund 27, the EMS fund, has a balance of $495,346. And the wastewater system development charge fees collected in 2017 now total $50,290. And the account balance there is $135,276. So there's some numbers for you. Very good. Uh, questions, Mr. Bridal? No, all good numbers. As always, you do an excellent job bringing them forward. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Director. Mr. Chairman, I have no questions. Mr. Griffin. Thank you again. You're You've done a great job, Thanks. as usual, and I'm sure you're uh, glad to be moving into fall. I am. The new challenges. Yes, the new challenges. Fun season coming yeah. in. And the finance director promised today that she wouldn't get up and leave before I could ask a question. I'm sitting very still. I know, very nice if you would do that. Uh, 
And then I had a question about. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, last last month, with the with the uh, auto revenues down to, was that the same or was it? Um, I think last month they may have been up. They've been fluctuating this year, though, for sure. They're usually always above target. Yeah. Um, but this year they have been going back and forth, which I don't quite understand because Fred and, and I can both attest to the fact that the lines in, for the town clerk seem to be long every day. So I don't know. Yeah. But it has been fluctuating this year, yeah. Some months she's over, some months she's under. Okay. And last month we were about 2% over also. Is that about the same, the 2.09? Uh, no, last month I believe we were, You mean are you talking about for expenses or revenues? Re for expenses. expenses. Last month we were um, under by a lot more. I think last month it was almost a million, and it's okay. been cut in half. And I kind of right. predicted that... With moving into the season, that we would see some changes in our expenses. You know, now that we're experiencing and I, summer. And I always ask you, legal expenses in one one fifty six. You, you're working with, staying on top of it. That we know. I don't really have any control you don't have to do over that, what the department I mean, making spends, sure but I'm watching money, it. Yes. Yes, yeah, so making sure there's money someplace and yep. Mark's aware of that. What's going on? Which yep. is very good. Yeah. And I was telling Christy today that sometimes I really need to get a life. Because sometimes I watch selectmen's meetings from other towns online, which is not a very bright thing to do. <laughs> and one meeting that I was watching, they were doing their monthly reports, and they said revenues good, expenses good. And that was it. <laughs> so you give us a great, uh, a great report, and this is all online, right? So anybody can see it. Yeah. Figure it out. Okay, Christy, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. What time was that, um, Mr. Chairman? I forget. I think it was Milton. Where were you before? Uh, I was the deputy dog up in uh, Milton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Director of Parks and Recreation, uh, Diana Martin. Good evening. Nice to see you. Me too. Diana was one of the big cheeses at the... <laughs> See at the pig for us. Big cheese. You did a at the great job. Thank you. That's I thought nice. it was great this year. The yeah, it was, was really great. Nice. The entertainment was great. The weather was great. Everything was great. It was super. Except yeah. I didn't win anything. No complaints. <laughs> great. All right. So um, for our update uh, in the parks maintenance department, um, True Green Chemlon has completed their maintenance program for the town. Um, we've been working with a new mowing company, Lobdell Landscaping, and they've been working out really good. It was a little rocky start at first because they were learning all of our spots, but um, they're doing a great job. The town looks good this year. Um, we started lining the fields for soccer and flag football. We finished up field prep and lining for the co-rec and men's softball leagues. We've been doing the general maintenance for the fields and picking up of the trash all around all the parks. We've been working on the toddler park at Tuck Field. Um, the five bar, which is the surfacing for the playground, had disintegrated, so it was um, growing grass. So we've taken all the five bar out, we've put some fill in, and um, we are also, the border around the playground was also rotting, so we've um, bought some new timbers for that. So the parks guys are completing the timbers part of that job right now. They're working on that, and then as soon as that's done, we'll be replacing the five bar, and then people will be able to get back onto the toddler park again. That's a big project, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have that work up and running again. Uh, we've been setting up the Joe boxes for the fields for the flag football season to start, and that season is going to be starting on Seafood Festival weekend. We've ordered and installed new home plates at Tuck Field and Eaton Park, as well as new bases at Eaton. We've done some repair work to the Lou Brown Park flag football field. We've set up and cleaned out the hockey rink each week for play. We continue to clean up the areas around the skateboard park for the residents. We set up volleyball courts at both Bicentennial Park and Lou Brown Park. And we received and are putting together the new picnic tables and the four sets of new bleachers down at Tuck Field. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, in the Ashworth Ave parking lot, um, we opened up early again this year for some concerts and the warm weather. 
and the other lots pretty much opened up at their regular time, which is Memorial Day weekend. Unfortunately, we have not had as great a summer as I would have liked in the parking lots. The weather was not the greatest this year, and there didn't seem to be as many day trippers as there usually are this year for whatever reason. So as of August 20, of August 6th, our numbers for the lots were $352,468. And as of August 6th last year, we had made $410.52. So the difference is not in the town's favor, but it, we're, we're catching up. We're about $57,000 behind last year. But we are catching up because we were like $72,000 <laughs> behind. So that's good news. Um, and uh, again, most of the staff has gone home, uh, gone home, has gone back to school for the season. So we're kind of on a skeleton crew now for the next few weeks. So. Um, and of course, we will have the Ashworth Ave lot open for the concerts after the Seafood Festival. Um, recreation program, we've just finished scheduling the fields for soccer, tackle football, flag football, co-rec softball, and men's league, fall softball league. Sign-ups for the K-2 sports program have started on August 23rd, and the season for that program will start in the next few weeks. We've set up a tiny tyke soccer program for the fall. The, um, we have two programs. They're for two and three year olds and four and five year olds, and that will start on September 6th at Tuckfield. We just had a bus um, load up for three. We just had three full bus loads for the Red Sox trips that we had. We had one on May 4th against the Baltimore Orioles. We had one on August 12th against the New York Yankees, and that trip was at Yankee Stadium. And then we have one more coming up, September 6th at Fenway Park against the Blue Jays. And like I said, all of those trips are full. We just finished our season for the Co-Rec Softball League and the Men's Softball Leagues for the summer, and we're now scheduling the banquets for those. Our Bone Builders class are going strong on Mondays and Fridays at the Tuck Building starting at 10 a.m. We have set up a trip to see the New England Patriots, and this trip is at the New York Jets Stadium. This trip is on October 15th, and the cost includes your bus ride, tailgate food, and your ticket to the game for $169 per person. In June, we started an adult run night on Tuesdays at 6.30, starting from the bathhouse down across from Bicentennial Park. Um, we have some pre-designed route options to choose from based on the runner's abilities, and it got really kind of warm on some of those nights, so we took a little hiatus, but we'll be starting that up again in September October. We have a trip to see the Phantom of the Opera at the Boston Opera House for September 14th. We've had a successful theater trips to a Gunquit Playhouse this summer to see Mamma Mia, which we saw in June, Bullets Over Broadway in July, and we have one trip left to see Heartbreak Hotel on September 13th. We had one casino trip a month until the summer to the Oxford Casino up in Maine. We have set up Oxford trips for September 28th, October 29th, and November 16th. We have a travel show coming up for our trip to America's Music Cities, which includes Nashville, Memphis, and New Orleans. The travel show is going to be held on September 14th at the Chamber of Commerce office on Route 1 in Hampton at 6 o'clock. The trip cost is approximately $3,000 per person, depending on what you sign up for. And the trip is going to be running April 6th through the 13th of 2018. Our fitness classes, including yoga and Pilates, have been running through the summer and now going back to their fall winter schedules and locations. We've implemented the following programs throughout the course of the summer, which included the Tuckfield Summer Day Camp, Surf Lessons, Archery Lessons, Challenger Soccer Camp, Granite State Track and Field, Lego Camp, Theater Camp, Tennis Lessons, Warrior Hoop Camp, Superhero Summer Camp, Watercolor Classes, Sea Life Camp, and Flag Football Camp. We just had a great luncheon trip for the seniors at DeMillo's Floating Restaurant. They just got back last week from that. We took a group to the Wright Museum in Wolfboro, Maine. We went to the Trolley Museum in Kennebunk, Maine in July, and we went to Squam Lake in July, and we did the 20th anniversary show for Riverdance in Portland, Maine in May. We've set up a New York, day, New York City day trip for November 18th, and we had our last one on May 20th. So this was a nice one. It's right before Christmas. Hopefully you get to see the tree put up in New York. We've set up a fall foliage trip for October 4th. We set up a Freeport shopping trip for November 20th. We've set up a trip to the Portland Symphony Orchestra for the Magic of Christmas on Saturday, December 8th. We've taken flag football registration, done the drafts for both leagues, and we're currently taking registration still for the high school rec league. 
and all these leagues will be starting, like I said, September 9th. We're hoping they're scheduled to co volleyball again this year, but we're not sure if that will work out with the work that they're doing at the junior high, because that's where we hold that, that class, so we'll see on that. But we have set up the men's basketball league to start on September 19th. And we've set up a program called Mindful Mondays for the Marshton School Age Kids on Mondays after school and Creative Kids Art, Creative Kids Arts, Creative Kids Crafts on Tuesday. Sorry, that was hard to say. I don't know why. Um, and we are in the process of setting up a fall theater program for the kids. We had a summer program and a spring program, and both went extremely well because we have a great theater instructor, George Oscar Boulay. And the Christmas tree lighting ceremony is being set up as we speak. It will be on December 1st this year, and the Experience Hampton Christmas Parade with the theme of Home of the Holidays is scheduled for the following day, December 2nd. That is all. A mouthful. <laughs> Mr. Bridal. Yeah, Diane, uh, good as ever. You, you, you've got a lot of projects for all age people. It's not just seniors. It's not just kids. It's everybody. We have a... Do we have a problem with dogs on our park, in our, our fields? Yes. yes. We have a lot of people that use um, uh, Lou Brown Park as a dog park. And I've seen people out at Tuck Field with their dogs off leash. We really do need a dog park. I'm just not sure where we could put it. So that's something we ought to look at. Because, I, I mean, I was Saturday, I was at the, uh, the pig roast, and I noticed there were a couple of people out there running the dogs and, and I, I own a dog but Me too. I also don't want to see dogs out there and next thing you know there's kids out there running in the field and we all know what happens when they step in you yeah know what. I agree uh, so people ought to be aware that dogs aren't supposed to be on our, our fields and walk them other places uh, there was a, a, a last year there was supposed to be a warrant article for a, for a dog park but it failed to get it uh, put in. It was supposed to be a private Warren article, and I hope the people that are out there will bring that back this year because yeah. I think we really need that. Yeah, the um, place I keep thinking about is the Campbell property. If we could put something out there, that would because be there's a lot of space there. You know, and I, and I see a lot when I, when I'm down visiting the state to the south of here, uh, where they have dog parks, and they, they have a simple idea of a mailbox. And a couple of holes drilled in it, and people put their um, bags that they get from the shopping center in there. And so, if somebody needs a bag, at least it's there. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can buy these big, expensive yeah. things to for dogs. And this is something pretty simple. It's something. You know, hopefully, we could get an Eagle Scout project or something like that to do something like this mm -hmm. to encourage people to pick up their dogs' waste. Uh, what else did I have? Oh, you you talked about. Uh, talked about your, your um, Tiny Tikes soccer program. I was on one of the, the local websites the other day and there was somebody on there looking for uh, preschool aged uh, children for soccer. So I'm glad to see you have that up there. Like, did you direct them to us? Yeah, I, I, I told them that they should, they should go to the, the rec department. But maybe that's something. Are we putting things in the school or the PTA's web? They have a Facebook uh, page, and it might be something you want to get in there because people are looking at that for recommendations of where to go. Right. So. Uh, the preschool one is kind of tough because they're littler kids and not in school yet. But we had one in the spring, which unfortunately was full, and we had to cancel because the kids coming over from Ireland and Eng England couldn't get visas to come into the country. To, to teach it, so we had to cancel it. So we're revamping it now for this for the fall. So we might want to have some of the the, the preschool and the daycares with yeah. a with a flyer to yeah. just let them know because those some of those parents are so busy that uh, they, they they don't have time to do all the searching for it. But yeah. if we if they had a flyer at some of the, the preschools or or some of the the daycares like Fun or the Village Preschool or whatever the other yeah, I think right now we have it out on the board out front. And we also have it on um, our Facebook page and as well as our website right now. But Good job. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Bain. Uh, thank you, Director. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Griffin. So, um, for instance, what does that trip, day trip to New York cost on November 18th? I think it's $70. And, and it's you leave at 6 in the morning and you return around midnight. 
So you get a ride over to New York and they drop you off at a certain spot. And then you have about seven hours of free time there to do whatever you want. You theater or lunch or... So where did they drop, where did, where did they pick up this bus? Right here, right in town. Um, and who provides the bus? We do. The one that we have? No, 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 we take a coach bus, oh, I'm sorry, okay. like yeah. New England coach or someone like that. Okay. But we set it up with them. And so then it's, how many people, like for instance, will be? Um, is it 65 or 70 passenger? It's and a these motor coach bus. usually always fill up? Yeah, it's a very popular trip. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, uh, good report, and I think you could add a couple of things maybe. <laughs> on, on a little weak. Yeah. No, that was great. Thank you. Well, and, Rusty uh, added the thing about the USS Hampton. We're meeting with um, the Cobb again tomorrow night, so hopefully we'll have some. I'll have some things out there for everybody, for the community to do with them soon. And every time I drive by the playground at Five Corners, it, it, it's, it's always used. somebody there. I mean, yeah. that, that was a great job, and it's a really good playground. Thank you. It's super. For this was, it was a long time coming, truthfully. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Yep. Next. Ed Tinker, Chief Assessor, 2017 MS1. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I did present a board of copies of the MS1s. There's three total. The, f the main one needs signatures once you've done reviewing and you approve it. Um, I did can I just interrupt first? Can you explain yeah. what an MS1 is? Um, yeah, it's the taxable value, um, the net value that's used for setting the tax rate. I did give you a cover sheet too to com always compare the current year with the prior year and what changes took place. Um, I did give a, a few um, primary points. Uh, the taxable value uh, from 17, or from 16 to 17, increased by uh, 25 million 750 thousand, or about eight tenths of one percent. Uh, the new value, taxable value this year is three billion 327 million. Six hundred twenty-eight thousand five hundred twenty dollars. Um, regarding the precinct, uh, if you look at uh, that's why why you have three MS ones. There's one for the precinct itself, which is the tax class two thousand. There's also one totaling both the precinct and the partial precinct. That total taxable value for both is seven seventy seven hundred seventy-four million nine hundred ninety-eight thousand five hundred twenty dollars. It's an increase of one point three percent over last year. Uh, one, one, uh, a couple other things. Uh, we break down utilities, exempt properties, exemptions, and credits. Um, basically, everything stayed flat. The exemptions, though, did increase this year um, by just over three million dollars. Uh, it's based on some new applications as well as the increase in the elderly exemption limits that we uh, put into place this year. Um, and so, if uh, if you have any questions, I can answer those for you. Um, Okay. All set. Thank you. Mr. Griffin? No, thank you. Mr. Uh, yes. You did the uh, reevaluation this year? Uh, last year. Last year. 16. That's 16 numbers. 16. Like it that. seems like yesterday. Uh, you've got uh, how many people in your office? Uh, one full time, one part time. Yeah, and we're looking at uh, valuations uh, that are approaching. Uh, Four billion dollars. You do a heck of a job, uh, Mr. Tinker. Appreciate and, uh, it. There are some other issues that you deal with with the town attorney, in terms of uh, some tort issues. Uh, again, you do a magnificent job, and thank you for your service. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so the to total valuation of the town is three billion five hundred eighty-three thousand ninety-nine eight two zero. Right. Yeah, that's that's okay. the total, including exempt property. Yeah. Before exemptions, before <coughs> deductions, yep. Where would that put us overall in New Hampshire, like rating with towns, the valuation of different towns, towns that are basically our size? Oh, I think we, we're, we're, we're tops based on size. Um, City-wise, of course, we're not. Yeah, no. But yeah, our number's, our number's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Especially for the seacoast, of course, yeah. We're, we're way above all of those. So. Okay. Very good. Yeah, you do a great, great job. You get a tough Appreciate job. It. But it's good. So Anything? You need, you need a motion to sign this? Is it? Yes. You do. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Be good. Okay. Good night. Thanks. Good. Thank Next, I don't see him here, but I see Jen here. Jen Hale, DPW Deputy Director, Lafayette Road Sewer Project Waiver from Section 718-4, Subsection B, 2 of the Purchasing Policy and Purchasing Procedures to award the contract to Jamco LLC. That is why I'm here. Uh, Chris could not make it tonight, but I'll walk through this if there's any questions. We put out the Lafayette Sewer Road uh, project uh, that was approved in March uh, for design. Uh, Wright Pierce had done the full design of the drawings. They went out to bid. Uh, we sent it according to the purchasing policy, I think almost to, what was it, 11 different vendors, not just 10. Uh, we did get four people who actually took the plans as plan holders. Uh, two firms attended our pre-bid meeting. Uh, but we only received one bid. Uh, Jamco submitted a bid for $924,467. Uh, this bid was slightly higher than what our uh, construction cost estimate uh, turned out to be, uh, but we do have the appropriate funding for it along with uh, the other parts of the project, the survey that was done, the geotechnical testing that will be needed, and our engineering fees. So it will all fall within uh, what we allotted for and under the Warren article. This project would go on similar to water. We are looking for night construction and would ask uh, for that approval as well this evening. And they are looking to get started as soon as possible. Our goal is to be complete before um, the asphalt plants close. Any questions, Mr. So as you said, I think the list here is it was sent to 13. Is it 13 on their total? Yes. 13 total. Lucky number 13, yes. And, uh, you know, I wish we'd have five or six bidders, but you can't make people bid. I mean, we sent it out to them. We asked them to bid. You said you had, what, two come to the, the pre-bid meeting? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can't force people to bid. And I think if they're, they're coming in and they're, they're doing it, I think we need to move forward with this project. Mr. Chairman, in accordance with the 23 August 17 memo to the town manager from Chris Jacobs, the director of public works, I move that the board of selectmen accept the bid submitted by Jamco in the amount of $924,467.50 and authorize the town manager to execute a contract to complete the work for the Lafayette Road sewer project. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Unanimous? And they want to start when? Right away? Right away. So we would look to uh, get the contract in place first. That will be the first thing we do. Uh, submit the notice to proceed. We would do a pre-construction meeting as early as this Thursday uh, to get everybody on board, go through their traffic management plan, which will be very similar to uh, what they have done for Aquarian. And then from there, wait uh, till probably right after the Seafood Festival starting that weekend. I, I would imagine that some people would have a question of Aquarian dug it all up and did that, paved over it, and now we're going to dig it up. Right. So explain why that <laughs> process. Um, first off, what we all know Aquarian was their own project, and the sewer is our project. So they were done separately um, because they're two different entities doing the work. The paving that you're seeing out there right now is complete temporary patch getting them through. We are working with Aquarian and Jamco uh, to come up with uh, the best way that everybody um, isn't doing things twice. The most efficient way uh, to get those trenches, um, I call it winter ready, meaning let's let them sit. We want them to settle as much as they are and then do final paving in the spring. But the goal is by the end of November, Aquarian has their trenches all up to par, and we have all of our trenches up to par, and it would all be done by Jamco because Jamco is the contractor for both of them. Okay. Yes, so, you? so, so just just be fair. We're not going to have the bumping and obstacle course we'll have now. No, I as think as bad all winter. No, yeah. In fact, it, yeah, it's been said multiple times. We're we're getting tired of the speed bumps. Um, it will be repaired. 
we will not have speed bumps into winter. And you're aware they're, they're in tonight's uh, packet there's people that are complaining. Yeah. We are trying to do our best. We are getting a few calls over at, uh, I believe it's Pinneman Lane. We are hearing some of the trucks in the middle of the night, um, you know, slamming when they're emptying. Uh, we've spoken with Jamco to try to not make it consistent. Let's not do extra trips. Let's try to just get um, things done, either moved in the morning hours, you know, the 5, 6, not the 2 a.m., uh, all stuff that we'll be talking about uh, on Thursday. One of the other complaints, uh, the sweeping, we've heard that one. Uh, they will be bringing a sweeper through weekly. Uh, right now we've been back and forth with them that the spot they're working on is getting swept, but not the rest of it. Uh, the whole path will need to get swept each uh, week when they're done paving to try to remedy these issues that we've been hearing. Okay. Nothing else? Yeah, I would just say this is that uh, to be patient, uh, the resident of Winnicott Road and uh, uh, with uh, fire station, with uh, school starting up, uh, with uh, the daily traffic count there that is uh, pushing 10,000 cars a day. Uh, this is an important project and uh, it was at the critical stage and you can hear downtown very easily from where I slumber and uh, I can uh, pretty much tell you what the, what's going on on Lafayette Road at 3 in the morning. And they do make a, a run right down Winnicott Road. And I would uh, urge everyone to be patient in the end state. Uh, the end of hostilities uh, on this project will occur with a, a, a nice fin paved road would be. So uh, a flat road mm -hmm. with a base course uh, will be end of November, end of November. before the plants close. So it'll be a nice Thanksgiving. Day. Prior to Thanksgiving. And again, everybody, we we're aware of the challenges, and uh, we're all suffering a bit, and be patient. Thank you. Okay. So we have a, we have a motion, and we have a second. Did we vote? No. All in favor. Unanimous. And then right. just a permission to continue on with the night hours. So motion. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. All right. Thank very you very good. much. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, night. You too. Number six on the appointments was Aquarian's uh, Vice President in Water Quality. That has been postponed until September 11th. But just to let people know that those meetings are going on, that there is talks between the town and Aquarian, right. so it's not something that's being put off. It's just uh, Selectman Barnes was not here tonight, and she wanted to be involved since she's been involved in it, so it's put off to September 11th, but it will continue. Uh, approval of minutes, sealed minutes of July 10th, 2017. Moved. Second. All in favor? Approved. Sealed minutes of August 7th, 2017. Moved. Second. Second. All approved. Sealed minutes of August 21st, 2017. Moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? 3 4 1 abstention. Uh, town manager's report. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, as we are all, I hope, know, Greg Side Road is open to traffic. Uh, paving will be accomplished in the near future. They're going to put down a, uh, uh, they've indicated to me they're going to put a base course down for the winter because the road does need to settle some. Uh, they've done a lot of compaction in it, but they'll do the final coat of asphalt in the spring. And the principal reason for that is when you look at Greg Side Road, they're doing some work down close to Route 1. There'll be some excavation in there. We want to make sure that whole area is paved uniformly so that we don't have to have trenches in the middle of the paving. So that will, that's the reason it's being held up till spring for the final course. The town's IT department uh, has placed online the test results from Prairie regarding the P PFCs, uh, as well as the town landfills tests as soon as they're done. Uh, we'll be continuing that process. We're going to add the, the, the tests, including uh, uh, tests reported to, uh, by the EPA, the DES, Aquarian, and the town. And we've also added up there uh, the recent water tests from the um, town of Exeter, who supplies water to about 32 structures out on the end of Exeter Road. <clears throat> so those test results are up there as well. For those who use Academy Avenue, you've heard tonight we're changing the traffic. We suggest that you seek an alternate route because of the construction at the Academy and alternate arrangements have been made for the loading and unloading of school buses. That will cause 
certain delays on the roadway, uh, as you heard this evening, if you can avoid Academy Avenue, please do. We have to protect our children going to school. Paving and operations are in progress on Route 1, Lafayette Road, from Park Avenue to Hampton South to the Massachusetts state line. So if you can find an alternate route to that one, because they're paving all over the place and doing things all over the place, my advice would be to do that if you can. Uh, we also have a, a, an invitation for those who wish to attend from uh, the governor and council. They are going to hold a hearing on October 16th. It's going to be at 7 p.m. It's going to be at the Seashell Complex, and it's going to deal with the projected 10-year highway program. And before our next meeting, which is on the 11th, um, there is going to be uh, on that day at 6 p.m. on High Street at the American Legion is going to be a celebration of the 9-11 memorial and I understand they're going to add another name to that memorial this year. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Questions? A couple of things. Uh, I noticed in our packet we had a letter from a gentleman down at 966 Ocean Boulevard mm. and was looking to have one of those signs put up there for the speed and it, it appears that uh, although we all know that that's a state road and it's their responsibility the state doesn't seem to think it's their road um, so I, I would just like that gentleman to know that, that is a state road and it is their responsibility uh, and maybe we should send a letter to the state just reminding them that that is their road actually he did that for us Okay. And they told them that it's not their responsibility to put that sign up, it's the town's responsibility. Well, so we, we know that's that's not the case. But th that being said, uh, there's a couple of places, uh, uh, Ocean Boulevard and O Street, the street sign has come down, and uh, I'd like to see that get replaced. I've asked that we asked for have it Okay. Replaced. And the other one is, um, and I know we've talked about it here before, is the stop sign on Harbor Road. And I know that's a private road. But yes. it, there are also taxpayers in this town, and I would hate to see somebody get hit there. And I would like to see us put a stop sign at the top of Harbor Road as you come up the hill, just as you come up into you're coming up onto a state road. I know where it is. But I I, I think uh, you know we I think it's time for for the, for the amount spent on a uh, on a street sign. I think it would be um, prudent to have it there where somebody uh, doesn't get hurt. We can if the board votes it because it's not legal for us to put it there. So I'll make that motion. I'll second. I talked to the gentleman there that's at the condominiums. Yeah. And he said that this that what what did there used to be a sign there? Yes. There was. It was. It, it ended up missing for some strange reason. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. All in favor? Unanimous. That's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Griffin. So when did you say that that meeting was for the 10-year plan? It's going to be, let me give you the right date. Let's find the body thing. Um, October 16th. It's going to be October 16th at 7 p.m. at the Seashell Complex. And what was the... Who told the state that, um, who told those people, what organization from the state told the people that the town is responsible to put up a sign on Ocean Boulevard? That was Division 6 in, in, uh, in uh, Durham. And it's their responsibility to put it up? Well, it's an electronic sign. They say they do not put up electronic signs for speed regulation or speed reminders. Uh, they say that's a function that's only performed by the town because they have no appropriation, no direction, and no equipment. But it is a state highway. But there isn't one there. There wasn't one in the... There's one in Northampton. Yeah. Uh, so that's what they're probably, suggesting. Right. And we, and, and if, if I may, Mr. Town Manager, so, you know, we had, uh, we had, the police chief had talked about that last year, and that was part of one of his warrant articles, right. and, we, and we pulled that out. And I think that's something that we need to look at again this year is, is buying some of those. Uh, they're a common effect, so. Mm -hmm. They are. <clears throat> they definitely are. Anything else? Hi. Mr. Bean? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we won't meet for two more weeks. We'll have the, um, 
the uh, sea seafood festival. Uh, that'll be a big success. It's supposed to be great weather. And uh, thank you for all the people in Hampton, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the sponsors, and those that participate in that, and especially your, your department heads in their planning. And Mr. Nyan, uh, as, as we head into the autumn, uh, um, with there's no objection from the board, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would uh, solicit uh, Mr. Welch's input from his uh, department heads for any requests for information, any uh, strategic uh, planning uh, in, in my role as uh, an assignee and a member of the uh, State Parks Advisory Council. I would look for that uh, um, close of business, 31 September or 30, you know, the end of September, if you can get that. Thank you, sir. Looking forward to that. Additionally, uh, for the for the delegation uh, in Concord, for the uh, representatives, uh, Mr. Chairman, if there's no objection, we did uh, work closely with the town last year in terms of uh, uh, submitting some legislation. Uh, we'll do it again, uh, and without objection, for for all of the members, if the uh, uh, town manager and his staff, including legal counsel, can forward what they think are again uh, efforts for legislative purposes. Mr. Welch has already commenced that. We'd look forward to that. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Thank Thank you, Mr. Uh, I have one question, and, and the board also. Our next meeting is September 11th. Sir. And the September 11th ceremony over at the post is the same day. It, it starts it at 6. That is correct, sir. Okay. I would like to suggest that we start our meeting after that finishes. Because I know myself, I don't. Want to, I go every year, and I don't want to be over there and have to run out before right. it's finished. I mean, it, right. it, 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 it. I think if we start our meeting at 7:30. Would just that change it? 7:30. I think time. we'll have plenty of time to get here. Yeah. Okay. Could could I have a motion for that? I'll make that motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay, unanimous. That the meeting will start at 7:30 on the 11th. Very good. Thank you. And we encourage everybody in town to attend the 9/11. <coughs> yes. Absolutely very important. Very important, and it, it they they do a fabulous job of it over there. It's a very very moving very ceremony. Good. Yes. Okay, old business. Nobody. Don't ask twice. <laughs> <laughs> old business. New business. <laughs> Anything in the new business? No. Uh, closing comments. Motion to adjourn at 1957. Second. All in favor? Sounds like a deputy. You're an hour, Mr. Chairman. Good job. Excellent.